So the Canada Pension Plan is getting bigger. In the last video, I showed you how the Canada Pension Plan was increasing and how that would affect the maximum payment. And so we talked about how the max CPP was going to go from $14,925 per year and how that was going to increase based on the new contribution percentage and the income replacement percent and then how that was also going to increase when the average, the maximum, went up. But what we didn't really talk about is how that would affect people. So this is the new maximum once the full CPP expansion takes effect. But you're not going to experience the full maximum because you're probably only going to contribute to CPP for only a certain number of years. So how's it going to affect you in particular? Well, at the bottom of this blog post, and I'll, I'll post the link in the description for this video, at the bottom of this blog post, we've got an example of how CPP max will expand. So we can see here that every year, the new maximum payment in today's dollars, so adjusted for inflation, the new maximum payment is going to slowly increase as you make more and more contributions at the new higher CPP rates and with a new higher maximum CPP amount. So this affects everybody a little bit differently depending on how many years you will have contributed to the new CPP. Now the problem with this is this shows the max number. So in this video I want to show you how it's going to affect somebody in their 60s, their 50s, their 40s, their 30s, and their 20s. And I'm going to show you an example with the average CPP. So not the maximum CPP, but closer to the average CPP and how that's going to affect somebody in those different age brackets. So let's take a look. So in this first example, we've got somebody age 60 who's about to retire. So Marvin, he's been contributing to CPP for the last, since age 18, up to age 60. Now he's about to retire and he's trying to estimate how much he's going to get from CPP in the future. And he's going to get close to the average. So the average right now is close to $9,000 a year at age 65. And that's about what he's going to get is about $8,800 per year at age 65. Now Marvin, he doesn't get a lot of benefit from CPP expansion because he's been contributing mostly to the older CPP with a lower replacement percent. So for Marvin, there's not a huge benefit to CPP expansion, although there is going to be a little bit of an effect there. So now let's take a look at somebody who's age 50, and we'll see what the effect is on their CPP benefit. So here we've got Marty. Marty is age 50. Marty's going to retire in 10 years at age 60. But Marty, he's going to have 10 years of contributions to the new CPP maximum. Now, both of these examples, they have the same income. So they've got the same inflation adjusted income. So there's no difference in income, but Marty here is going to get quite a bit more from CPP. So almost 2000 a year more from CPP because he's going to have at least 10 years of contributions to the new CPP enhancement. So he's not going to get the full effect. He's not going to get the full 50% increase. But he's going to get some of it because he's going to have 10 years plus of contributions to the new CPP maximum. So for Marty, instead of getting 8,800 a year, he's going to get 10,600, almost 10,700 a year. So quite a bit more. So that's what a, the effect looks like for somebody in their 50s. So even if you're in your 50s now and approaching retirement, there still could be quite a big benefit from CPP expansion. Now let's take a look what it looks like for somebody in their 40s. Okay, so Michael is age 40 right now, and Michael is going to still retire at age 60, just like the two previous examples. And again, the income that Michael's earning is at the same inflation-adjusted income as the two previous examples. So no change in income, no change in retirement date. But look how much more Michael's going to get. So Michael's going to have over 20 years of contributions to the new CPP enhancement, and Michael's going to get over 12,000 years, so 12,692 Whereas the initial example was only getting 8,800, so quite a bit more because of the 20 years of contributions to CBP enhancement. So Michael's going to work out to have quite a bit more retirement income and will require quite a bit less in retirement assets simply because CPP expansion is providing almost 4,000 a year. So that 4,000 a year means that Michael needs to save 100,000 less 
in registered accounts by the time he retires needs to save $100,000 less than somebody retiring today. Now let's take a look and see how the effect is for somebody in their 30s. So in this example, we've got Mark. Mark is 30 right now, and Mark has a lot of contributions ahead of him towards the CPP maximum, the new CPP enhancement. But in Mark's example, we haven't gone up quite as much as the previous one. And the reason is Mark hasn't quite hit his peak earning years yet. So unlike the previous example, in their 40s, they're in their peak earning years and they're getting the most benefit from CPP enhancement. Mark here, he's in his early 30s, hasn't quite hit the max CPP, and so he's not really getting the same benefit from CPP enhancement. So even though there's still an increase versus the 12,000 or so we saw previously, it's not as big an increase as we saw before. And that's simply because most of his 20s, Mark was at a lower income level. In his 30s, it's starting to go up, um, but we're not getting the same benefit as the previous one because he's not quite at his peak earning years yet. So that was an example of somebody in their 30s. Now let's take a look at an example of somebody in their 20s. So Mike here is age 20. He's about to start university. And for him, CPP enhancement is, has the same effect as the 30-year-old. So there's not as much as a benefit. And this is simply because those years in Mike's 20s has less of an effect. So although Mike's going to get the full benefit of CPP expansion, because his earnings in his 20s and early 30s aren't at the max, there's less of an impact for him. And this is why it's very important to calculate your specific CPP number, how much you're gonna get from CPP benefit in the future, because every situation is a little bit different. So if Mike were to retire early, this would also be significantly different because Mike would have a number of his higher earning years, which would now be zero. And so there's lots of factors that go into your CPP calculation estimate, especially now with CPP enhancement rolling out. So you're gonna have your base CPP estimate plus your CPP enhancement, and then you're gonna have your real factors in terms of you know, gap years, years at university, earning lower income, or maybe gaps in employment or retiring early. So all of those things are gonna have a big impact on your CPP benefit in the future. But for those in their 20s and 30s right now, CPP enhancements, it's gonna be a big factor. For those in their 40s, it's still gonna be a big factor, but not the max. They're not gonna get the most benefit from it. And even somebody in their 50s, they're still gonna see some sort of benefit, but not quite as much. And then if you're in your 60s right now, you've probably got the minimum benefit from CPP enhancement. But this is why calculating your benefit, your CPP benefit in the future using a platform like PlanEasy makes a lot of sense. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We're coming out with new videos every week. Thank you for watching.